Following Newtown, many in the U.S. rallied behind a push for more gun control. Well, six months later, no legislation has been passed. Joining us now to talk about that and several other topics, Wisconsin Senator Tammy Baldwin. Thank you so much for being with us today. I'm delighted to be here. What is the status right now of gun control legislation in Washington? Well, after a couple of key votes on amendments came short in terms of uh, mustering the numbers they needed to pass, it was set aside with the hope that uh, parents like the parents of Newtown and frankly family members and concerned citizens across the country can uh, regain the uh, political momentum that's going to be needed to pass this. And I know that a number of my colleagues in the U.S. Senate who voted no on a particularly key amendment regarding expansion of background checks um, are getting a lot of pressure and perhaps really rethinking their vote. So while there's no date in mind right now, the hope is that we'll be able to uh, take this legislation up again. And we hope it doesn't take another uh, tragedy like what we saw in Newtown, Connecticut to uh, get that momentum. Uh, uh, but uh, whatever it takes, we need to continue to press on this. That was probably the biggest shock was the background checks. That seemed like the one that had the most public support and might sail. We hear a lot that it's the NRA influence that's, that's stopping this legislation. Is that true or is there just not enough public support? You know, the two uh, senators who crafted the provision relating to expanding background checks and cracking down on gun trafficking are both proud NRA members with A-plus ratings. But they saw the wisdom and common sense nature of these uh, measures and were personally uh, affected, as we all were, by the tragedy of seeing 26 and 7-year-olds. Um, brutally murdered. Uh, and so, you know, I, I think that if you look among gun owners, I mean, I'm a gun owner myself, but it, it should not uh, be, um, it, it should not cause one pause to just demand something as simple as universal background checks. I believe that it in no way infringes Second Amendment rights if we ask the basic questions of whether um, a gun is being sold to a person who is a felon. Uh, no one would want to sell their weapon to a person who is dangerous and um, and so this is just common sense to me. Now there was a lot of push for it directly after Newtown and everything stalled out. That was frustrating to a lot of people. A recent uh, poll came out for Congress's approval rating which is a 10 percent which is an all-time low. How do you feel when you see those approval ratings and what do you think is the biggest cause of that? You know I I think that uh, Congress needs to do better and we need to actually pay attention to those polls. Usually I say politicians shouldn't pay attention to mm -hmm. popularity polls but in this case, it is a strong message that, um, that partisanship needs to be set aside and that we really need to come together on the very serious challenges that are facing this country. You know, we can have differences of opinion on how to get the job done, but the challenges are clear. And I think the public wants to see Congress working together. Now, I'm hopeful as a brand new senator that some of the things that we've been doing at, um, in the Senate recently will begin to change um, those opinions. We just passed on a very broad bipartisan basis a farm bill. One that I think is a significant improvement and gives our farmers some certainty that they've been desperate for. You know, farming is, is about managing risk, and this gives them some new tools to do that. We're starting a debate on immigration reform. Again, it's starting off on a great bipartisan foot, and I hope it continues that way. So I do hope that some of the things we're doing right now will change um, that assessment by the American public on, on whether Congress can get the job done. Because I know that it, things have been, you know, pretty contentious. If the last couple of years in Congress and we hear a lot of lawmakers say we just need to come work together you know you're you said you mentioned it you're a new senator is that ever going to happen or is that just something we're going to keep hearing lawmakers say we well, need to work together as I said I, I'm seeing it already in my first few months in the job I think about uh, you know the farm bill we just passed a major piece of legislation called the water resources development act it affects uh, Wisconsin where we're on two great lakes and our west coast on the Mississippi River uh, and uh, so I you know I'm beginning to see that, but I would say um, 
recently, uh, especially around the issue of health care, the continued uh, insistence on partisanship of that issue is really distressing to me. You know, the, the House of Representatives last week voted for a 37th time to repeal the Affordable Care Act. Mm -hmm. It is high time to get away with the, the partisan talking points and to come together and make this work for the Wisconsin people and the American people. We're out of time, but I, I definitely wanted to get to one more topic. Right. Uh, starting July 1st, uh, student loans yes. are going to uh, double. For of students in this country. Is there any hope that, that, that you might be able to find a deal and, and avert that? You know, I'm certainly hopeful that um, we will find an 11th hour deal to keep the interest rates at 3.4%. Um, but I think it's a much broader issue. The level of indebtedness that students are facing these days as they emerge from college means they're deferring things like their first car purchase or their first home purchase. And it really may put at risk their entry into the middle class. Mm -hmm. This is a bigger issue that we need to deal with beyond just making sure sure we keep those interest rates at 3.4 percent or lower. I wish we could keep talking, but Senator, thank you so much for <laughs> coming you. in today. Meanwhile, in other news